And you have to start on earnings because that train just keeps on rolling right along. Under Armour, uh, stock surging here in the pre-market, really not a bad quarter by Under Armour. I think the tell was that Levi, Levi's report a couple weeks ago. Under Armour reporting sales of 8%. Their wholesale di division, which sells into department stores, the likes of a Kohl's, that's up 10%. Uh, North America looking pretty good. All in all, not a bad quarter for Under Armour. Absolutely, Brian. And I think I really was impressed here taking a look at Under Armour's North American revenue. That up 7.6%. The estimate was for 4.5%, and that also compares to a drop of 5% in that division in the same quarter last year. Uh, we know that even heading into the pandemic, Under Armour had been struggling to turn sales around in its home market, which is also its largest geographical segment. So it does look like Wall Street is rewarding the company for what looks like a pretty strong beat here across the board. I mean, again, uh, seeing net revenue coming in at about $1.6 billion, the estimate for $1.5 billion, and also beating on those bottom line results. Results. And then if we take a look here at some of the actual product segments as well, uh, apparel sales up 14% in the quarter, footwear up 10%. Uh, at the same time, the company did flag that logistics issues ate into their margins. The company is still dealing with some supply chain bottlenecks, as are many of its retail rivals as well. And the company also had to contend with some factory shutdowns in Vietnam as well as port congestion. So I think to see the company really beating across all major metrics, continuing to grow on the top line, even in spite of some of these concerns, really has Wall Street cheering here. And again, a really big pop off the back of these earnings. And that stock is up about 12% in pre-market trading, Brian. Yeah, and just uh, some of the notes, Emily, that I'm getting into my uh, email box now. The street's liking that fourth quarter guidance coming in a little bit ahead of consensus here. Uh, also calling out uh, their gross profit margins up 310 basis points. And that really stands out here uh, because, look, everything we've heard from retailers the past few months, supply chain challenges, uh, just having problems getting products from overseas to the U.S., having to deal with inflation here. Under Armour telling us uh, really that they are navigating these challenges pretty well. They have enough what appears to be a, a good bit of inventory on their books for the holiday shopping season here. And the turnaround looks to be progressing under pra Patrick Frisk. He's closed up a lot of uh, distribution points. You, you know, you're not walking into Marshall's, Emily, and seeing uh, discounted Under Armour socks for selling for a dollar. So that's uh, that's pretty good and showing up in these financial results. And, you know, Switch is staying on retail here. I mean, it's also showing up in Ralph Lauren. A uh, pretty good quarter from them as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, taking a look here, really echoing what we saw from Under Armour, although not necessarily seeing the same magnitude of a stock pop here. That stock is actually down slightly in pre-market trading, um, but fluctuating between gains and losses as we saw these results come out. But for these fiscal second quarter results, net revenue up 26% year on year to $1.5 billion, just slightly ahead of expectations. And we can see those adjusted earnings per share were also a beat at $2.62. As you mentioned, with uh, similar with Under Armour, we did see them build up some inventory heading into the holiday season. That inventory build was up 5% uh, compared to last year. And if we take a look at the same period uh, last year, that had been down 12%. So again, seeing some positive trends in the on the inventory front as well for Ralph Lauren. And then if we take a look again at comparable same store sales, excluding currency impacts, a lot of strength here also in North America. Those were up 31%. And then if we look at Europe, those were up 27% as well. So again, seeing some pretty strong top line growth trends here for Ralph Lauren. Uh, also a pretty solid uh, the current quarter outlook, the company seeing sales in constant currency up as much as 16%. And also in terms of uh, what we can expect for the rest of the year, uh, the company expects to resume share repurchases in the second half of fiscal 2022. So a vote of confidence in terms of uh, its capital outlook here, uh, not necessarily seeing too much movement on the stock front, perhaps, again, because of these larger magnitude beats we're seeing from the other retailers here, but still solid results from Ralph Lauren, Brian. Yeah, hang with me, Emily. Nerdy former retail analyst uh, moment here. I used to cover Paula Ralph Lauren, and one thing that stood to me in this recorder, and I always used to write about it way back in the day in my non-boomer years, average unit retail prices in the quarter for Ralph Lauren up 14% year over year. That is pretty big. Uh, a year ago at this time, they took up average unit retail prices by 26%. Uh, a simpler way of explaining that is if you want to pop your collar with a polo shirt, it's going to cost you more likely this holiday season. It costed you more in the most recent quarter, and it cost you more to do that fun thing and take Instagram photos of it at this point last year. Uh, secondarily here, you're really getting the sense this company is in fact turning itself around under its relatively new CEO. That is, of course, a positive. 
And last but not least, for those looking to put on some holiday season trades, look what we have seen from these apparel makers so far. Levi's quarter, like I just mentioned, a couple weeks ago, pretty darn strong. Under Armour out today, positive stock market reaction. Very good quarter for Under Armour. And then Polo Ralph Lauren, I'm surprised to not see that stock uh, getting a little love here in the pre-market. Really uh, operating profits up in all business segments. All in all, a good quarter for them. And, and switching gears here, uh, well, actually staying with consumer products, Emily, Clorox, mixed quarter here. And the market is cheering this for a little bit. I mean, Clorox shares have been dead money. Uh, for the better part of this year, they, they continue to see slowing growth rates, but the market likes this one so far. And that's right, Brian. I think this was one of those cases where we saw Clorox beating what had been a lowered bar for expectations for these fiscal first quarter results. Um, if we take a look here, net sales actually did drop by nearly 6% year on, on year. Tough comps for Clorox heading into this particular quarter, since, of course, the company is going up against what had been a pandemic-fueled surge in cleaning product, household product purchases in the same period last year. So uh, this was really going to be a tough act to follow if we think about that year-on-year -year period. But think about what Clorox's stock has done over the course of the 21, uh, 2021 to date, down 19%, so really a better-than-feared quarter here um, to still see net sales beating, even though they did fall on a year-over-year -year basis. And one of the big things that analysts had been looking for with Clorox was any commentary around price increases. And it does seem that this company is going to be announcing pricing plans uh, on about 70 percent of its portfolio. That's going to be taking effect by the end of fiscal 2022. Of course, uh, the company just reported its first quarter results for fiscal 2022. So definitely some price increases here across uh, on the horizon of across a broad range of products here in Clorox's portfolio, Brian. So uh, I think that is something that uh, the street had been looking to see, something that's going to offset some of the margin pressure for these household consumer product companies, and uh, definitely something that will likely be a theme for a lot of these other consumer packaged good brands as well. Yeah, Clorox, uh, right, Emily, they're ready to drop the boom yet again in lowering prices. I think they're getting ready to hammer consumers over the head with price increases next year. They have taken some already, uh, but this is going to be broad-based. They talked about this at length in the conference call. So if you are a fan of Clorox disinfecting wipes or, I believe, Fresh Pet cat litter or Brita water bottles, which is all under the umbrella of Clorox, you're likely to pay higher prices next year. And you still have to wonder, Emily, can they, just because they're raising prices, can they continue to drive the volume that they want to drive uh, there was some talk on the conference call about price uh, resistance. You know, how much can you continue to press uh, increase prices to offset inflation for consumers? Say, hey, you know what? I'm not buying your wipes, and if I need wipes, I'm going to go buy a, a private label product. And lastly, too, before I move on to Pfizer, uh, Emily, I think why you're seeing the stock up here in the pre-market quarter wasn't that good. It's just that uh, Clorox gave some, I would say, very optimistic guidance in the second half of uh, over the next 12 months. Second half of this year, looking for sales to re-accelerate re to three to 5%, also looking for profit margins to improve in, the, in their fourth fiscal quarter. That's a tall order, just based on where the business is today. Uh, and then lastly here, uh, Pfizer earnings. Uh, pretty good quarter from Pfizer, I guess, to be as, as expected here, Emily. And that's right. To be expected here, Brian, and actually some better than expected results, especially when it comes to those COVID-19 vaccine contributions. Now, we saw COVID-19 vaccine revenue came in at nearly $13 billion in the quarter, so comprising a pretty sizable chunk of that overall $24.1 billion in revenue that we saw for Pfizer in the fiscal third quarter. Uh, the company also raising its outlook for the full year. The company sees uh, COVID-19 vaccine revenue coming in at 36 billion previously saw about 33 and a half billion for the full year and then on profit guidance the company sees adjusted earning per share at as much as four dollars and 18 cents previously saw as much as four dollars and five cents uh, and also ahead of the streets estimates for four dollars and six cents here for Pfizer so uh, even though Pfizer has of course had a pretty strong run up ever since announcing that positive COVID vaccine uh, data back in November 2020. We are still seeing that stock continuing to rise in this morning's trading. That stock is up about three and a half percent. So it does seem like it's going to continue to get a boost here from that particular segment into at least the end of this fiscal year, Brian. And I'll quickly add Novavax, uh, one of the top trending tickers right now on the Yahoo Finance platform, seeing some positive uh, chatter around its potential COVID-19 vaccine for a change.